vous avez vu Fille pas toi. Vous avez vu Alright brother, I think we're, oh no, we're still loading right now bro. Right. We're loading, we're loading. You and I are the only ones here today? Yeah bro, All it's right. gonna be intimate. It's gonna be, I like it, I like to have a one on one. Intimate, oh, yes, hey. intimate, intimate moment with boxing. Ruckus. Yeah, oh, hey, hey, Ruckus. hey, look into my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, oh. Clink, clink, clink. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Vasquez, what up? Uh, como estan? Hey, Eric Molinar, what's up, my man? Nothing but War Media, guys. Don't forget, if you don't have War Media, make sure you hit up my people at War Media on Instagram so you can stop paying for cable. Do you pay for cable, uh, Gomez? The only people that pay for cable are people that are born in, back in the century. You know, right now it's all about the streaming. You know what more important? About Cody. You know Cody. Oh, bro. This you. beats Cody, bro. What is it called? It's called War Media, man. War Media? Check it out, bro. My boys, bro. My War boy. Media. All right. Better than Cody. Better. All right. Cool. Better, man, better. If I told you I used to make a living out of selling um, um, hacked fucking fire sticks, I would fucking buy them at $49, whatever. It, and you would load them up? Yeah, I would fucking hack them, load them up and all that shit, and I would sell them for 80 bucks. How much? Oh, you're making $4 profit, bro. $4? $40. $40, yeah. And I, vendias? How many would you sell? I used to sell, like, on the weekends mainly. I would sell maybe, Tony. like... Yeah. You forgot to put the sign, bro. How many would you sell on the weekend? About 10. Five sometimes. I mean, it depends. Usually boxing, 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 um, yeah. boxing weekends. Yeah. Those are the ones. So, sir, we got it. We good? Yeah. He had a family emergency. All right. Uh, you want to still later load up a little, or, or we got going? What do you guys got? Five more minutes. You already shut it, shut it out or no? You know how to do it? Or you want me to do it? All right, everybody, don't forget, let's share. Rick the Ruler, let's share it. Carol McKenna, let's share this. Uh, everybody share it. Carol's actually from Australia, bro. Okay. I was say, I, I, I have all your bio, bro, so I know you didn't find Australia. I was like, did you find Australia? But no, you didn't. No, I didn't have the pleasure. But Would you want to go to Australia and fight out there, bro? Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's a new world, dude. Let's be honest. The whole world is now in one bubble. Yeah. Yeah, we're still working like fucking back in the century where things are divided. It's not like that anymore. No, 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 no. I would love to fight anywhere. In the world. In the world. As long as it has enough, you know, audience and exposure. Not to get paid, but for people to actually see. Uh, I have Ruben Cuellar. He's a trainer out of uh, Wildcard 2. What's up, Ruben? We're here with uh, Alfonso Gomez. You going live there too? Yeah, no, no. I, this is my live. You can go. You can watch your live oh, on this there. Right here? Yeah, yeah. We're we'll wrong, bro. Where's your phone? Wait a second. That's backed up, though, right? No, bro. It's not. If I do this, how come it doesn't move? No, there's a ten second delay. Oh, it's a ten, ten second, second delay. Okay. Yeah, bro. Make sure you bleep shit out, huh? Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. <laughs> well, we could use profanity, bro. <laughs> oh, my bad. No, we could. Oh, cool. Because I say a lot of bad words. I say a lot of Even bad words. Even though I don't too. think they're bad, you think they're bad, not me. <laughs> no, only people that have bad minds think they're bad. I think so. Yeah, right, see, I got you right now. We're good, bro. Okay, we're live then. We're live, we're live, we're live. Hola a todos, como están? Chim Gomez, Chim Gomez. Si están ya, if you guys are already present, si están en presencia, saluden, cabrones. We have Josh Alvarado saying, what's up? Ready to go, bro. So we're ready, bro. Let's get started. I'm just going to break down the fights first and then, uh, you know, you told me you watched some of them, so you did it. So let's talk about it, right? Uh, I'm going to start with the uh, Super Series of Boxing, the one that's happening right now. It's kind of like the contender, but it's like the one that they're throwing out in Europe, and it was in Scotland. 
where we had uh, este Ivan uh, Barinchkik versus uh, Josh Taylor. Josh Taylor won by unanimous decision, bro. I'm going to be honest, guys. Even though Josh Taylor won, the beast still showed me that I want to see him. When the fighter doesn't give up, bro. When the fighter keeps on going forward, even though you're getting beat, you're getting dropped, bro. Like, he was getting dropped by Taylor. Taylor got the unanimous decision, but I'm saying it captures something. You fought a guy, and you beat a guy that used to have that type of magnet. When we get to the interview, we'll talk about that. And I think you know who I'm going to talk about. A guy that a lot of fighters wanted to fight. Okay. You beat him, bro. I beat him. Shit. You beat him. Hey, I'm going to say this. May he rest in peace, bro. Oh. You, I'm pretty sure you know who it is, bro. And when we get to the interview, we'll talk about it. But, uh, <laughs> what's up about you about getting your license? What's up with your license, bro? Me, my license? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I don't have a driver's license. Been like forever, and I drive everywhere. Is that what you mean? Or my boxing license? You think I'm gonna? Because I heard people say that I'm gonna have trouble getting a license by the commission because I've been out for four years. Is that what you mean? Who's, who's asking that question? Uh, Jose Luis Cortez. Jose hey, bro. We're not even getting into the interview yet, bro. Chill out, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we're, we're now we're breaking down fights. You were telling me about a boxer. Who I was talking about. Wouldn't quit even though he was getting hurt. He, yeah, he, even though he was getting hurt, he got hurt three times. See, he got he, dropped. But he still went to the decision, bro. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, to me, as a boxing fan, as a boxing kind of source, I want to see that fighter again, bro. Even though he got a defeat, he was undefeated, he got a nail now, I want to see him again, bro. Like, is, is it wrong of me to do that? Nah, you can put it there, bro. I have somebody dry clean this motherfucker Sorry. up. <laughs> you want me to get your napkin? Hey, Tony, can we get... No, I don't want to fucking... Alfonso, uh, Alfonso, a napkin right there, bro. Give him a napkin, dude. And can I get a beer, my man? Thank you. Beer me up. Oh. Answering your questions, I just want to say hi to all the audience. Thank you for Ooh, being here. Yeah. I love you guys. Oh, uh, te manda saludos, Marta Najera. Marta saludos. Najera, un saludo. This is uh, uh, Chicali Boxing in the house. Yeah, you know, you know what's funny that every interview that I go to, termino hablando en español. <laughs> hey, aquí le podemos mezclar, bro. Sí, English, mezclar, Spanish. Mezclar, mix. Hey, I will tell you guys something, dude. And uh, and this guy doesn't need to be prepped. You were ready to go, bro. We did a, like a little live video right now before we even got in the studio. What was the song that you sang? El Gallo en la Mañana. Okay. Sing it to him, bro. Right. And, and, and before, I'm gonna say before I say why I say this thing, you know, there's okay. little songs that I do in the mornings. The reason I do it is because have you noticed how the first thing I want to say a lot of people do is grab their phone? Yeah. Check their feed. You know, and most of the feeds are people, uh, I don't know. Showing off their food, or fucking showing off their cars, or showing off the apps, or some girls showing off their ass! Right? You know, <laughs> so I don't want to show nothing, I just wanted to give, which is different. It's a different aspect of posting something. Now, what I wanted to give in the morning is that song, every day, every day, it has to, I have three of them, I've seen the, the Gallo one. But every day, the more... But I, I, don't want you, I want you to sing one song until we get to the interview, yeah. only one song. Yeah. Don't give them uh, everything, bro. I'm not going to give them everything. So the reason I do it is so that when they wake up in the morning and they hear this, the first thing they're going to hear is something that's going to li- uplift their spirit. They're going to make him happy. Ah, ah, and that brings a smile to your face. And trust me, that energy you shoot out when you're in that, in that zone. You receive it again, no? That, no but that, yeah, the energy you're shooting out when you get up in the zone makes your day. Yeah. How many, times, how many people wake up mad? A, a lot. A lot, man. bro. You got, you got to see them on the freeway. Okay, here is the No, song. on the freeway. Okay. On the freeway. I would see angry people, bro. Angry people everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. And it's not fair because all they're doing is doing harm to themselves in their day and the people that surround them. So in the mornings, I get up. I have my hat that has a gallo, has, has a rooster. And I go, um, soy como el gallo. En la mañana, dándole gracias a Dios. Kikiri, 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 ki. I'm like the rooster. Early in the morning, <coughs> singing and singing to God. Kikiri, 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 ki. Kikiri, kikiri, ki. Now, <gasps> does Bam Bam Rios ever hit you up? Eh? Bam Bam Rios? Because he does that also the, the kikiri, ki, though. I don't know. Uh, right. Yeah, he does it after the fights. Oh, but, um, oh, that's yeah. cool. But let me say something. What's up to uh, we have Virgil Ortiz Senior? You know his son Virgil Ortiz oh, yeah, he just Junior. Fought, right? Yeah, dude, he looked good against Mauricio like, Herrera. Yeah, like fucking incredible. Yeah, incredible, bro. I like that kid. Yeah, lo saludé. Actually, I texted him, "Congratulations on the victory." He's like, "I'm his dad." It's like, I know. Congratulations, <laughs> dad. Shit. <laughs> so he's out here saying, "What's up, guys?" Uh, Marta's nos está invitando el Saturday twenty the twenty fifth. I guess this weekend. Uh, Guerra en el ring in uh, Mexicali, bro. 
Mexicali. ¿Qué, qué, ¿Pero qué vamos a agarrar? ¿Vamos a agarrar botella o algo? ¿O what's up? Oh, yeah, what's going on over there? <laughs> hey, uh, we got uh, Frankie Olalgue. Uh, you know uh, Frankie from Vilify? No. From what? Vilify Media? No. He's in here too, Frankie. bro. Frankie says, Now what I'm up? All right, guys. Don't forget, this is the Boxing Rundown. Welcome to the Boxing Rundown. Well, All right. Let's, let's get back into it. Let me answer your question you were saying. Because I was saying. I had a, a thought that it was right, Go ahead. I know you wanted to see those fights. You wanted to do this. Yet we have fighters like that that, in my opinion, they harm their future, their own future, their own selves. Why? Because they, 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 he went more than he had to. I mean, you're telling me these I got dropped. He got dropped. That. Now, it brings me back to Amir Khan. Right. You know, that he got hit and then he said, decided to That's too no fast. more. And he had criticized a lot. Right. I was probably only the, the one of the very few people that applauded him. Because, wait, let me tell you why. <laughs> Because he's a businessman now. He's not just a boxer trying to come up. He's somebody that has a lot of people depending on him. Family, businesses, uh, blah, blah, blah. A lot of people depending on him. When you realize that, like... You're not going to win the if fight. If you continue, you're just going to harm all those people that are behind you at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. You know, more than your ego. Then you fucking have to be a man and be like, you know what? Chingon. I'm going to continue to see another one and still be with all my faculties because all people depend on me. People don't see that. So I applaud him for that, you know. I applaud, you know, who too? Uh, uh, Maidana too. My, uh, oh, there I you go. Him too. My, Maidana you know said, you know what? I started training. No. But Era like, una pinche matanza y I'm it's done. Cosa, it's like, yeah. De repente, he, he, he se dio cuenta, he, he noticed like, wait a second. Why am I killing myself? Why am I killing myself for somebody else? Yeah. You know, when I can be back home, not kill myself, and still have the love, have the, uh, have all the benefits of being Maidana, you know? Yeah, this guy was dying, and he got a and I said, ah, still, hey. still went at it, bro. He went at it, I know. So I applaud him for having the balls, and I'm worrying about what people are going to say, what they're going to get criticized. But, okay, so now you tell me this. I'm going to go with your philosophy, yeah, okay? Ahead. You're saying, and, and you know, I, I applaud you for that because sometimes I feel the same way. I'm saying like, hey, bro. If you're really that that down on the scorecards, you have too many drops. You have to be why? smart. You have to be smart. Why keep on going if you're not going to get the decision? Let me tell you why. Because we have this idea that we have to do that. And we don't. For the fans. Yeah, for, yeah, for the fans. Honestly, I was going to say F the fans, but no. Thank you guys, the fans. No, the fans are everything. They're everything. But, but they also have to understand what you're but, going through. But before the fans, before the promoters, and before the managers, and before the trainers. Sorry, Roy. Sorry, Roger. There's somebody up there. And he's a fighter. He's the one making all this happen at the end of the day. You know, because if there was, check it out. If there was no promoters, no managers, no trainers, and no fans, there'd still be boxers. There'd still be people kicking the shit off each other. But uh, on the if, streets. There was, if there was no boxers, there'd be none of the above. Right. So, uh, simple. simple. Okay, so, it's a, okay, but let me ask you this. It says, does it take two to tango? You're saying, okay, no, no, and I'm what I mean by two, don't, no, I'm, I'm going to say, say you need the boxers, and you also need everybody uh, everybody else yes, well, over but, here. But I, do, but I do, but you have to realize, and this is the truth, I mean, that's why I came back to boxing, honestly. I didn't come back to boxing for me. I already did what I had to do. I'm 38 years old. You got fucking badass guys coming. The only reason I came back to boxing is to be a voice for boxers that, have, that, went, that are probably going through the same shit I went through. Okay. And it's not sure. fair. All right, I got it's you. Not fucking fair. Okay. One of the things is the hierarchy of boxing. I set up. Hey, bro, bro, let's get into that into the interview. You already get into the interview. I'm gonna have to like stop them, guys. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> going back to that thing. So I applaud boxers that they know, go to the decision. Yeah. And when they go past that point, no. When they go past the point of like, what the fuck are you doing? Then you're not being smart. Yeah, you gotta take care of yourself. Yeah. You gotta. You're a business. You're it's a business. business. Yeah. You're a CEO of a business. If something is happening with the business, you gotta step back, take your losses, and and restart, and re, re, uh, regroup, replan, and go. All right. I mean, let's be honest. If there's a CEO that's losing money, losing money, losing money, losing money, hoping for some bullshit, guess okay, what's gonna happen? Probably the whole business is gonna. It's gonna go down. Yeah. Let's be smart. So you have to regroup. This is a business. I don't care what anybody says. Oh, because people make fun of this. Oh, now boxers are businessmen. Yes, right. We've been businessmen since forever. the beginning. Since the beginning, yet yeah, nobody told us. All right. Man. Hey, hold on a minute, Frankie. We're going to get to the interview right now, guys. <laughs> you guys are getting too excited because uh, Alfonso's getting into the interview already. All right. Let me get to the second fight of that evening. Well, there was some more fights, but second fight that I'm interested in. All right. All right so Emmanuel okay. Rodriguez versus Naoya Inoue, the monster, bro. And I'm going to tell you this. I call that... To me, I don't know why he's not in the top five pound for pound. This guy's a killer, bro. 
uh, he just destroyed uh, Rodriguez. His pops during the the media, you know how you guys do the media workouts, the week fight, you know, five week, mm-hmm. that Wednesday, the opponent's brother pushed the dab, bro. Like, oh, I saw that you saw that, right? I kind of saw something like that. Pero ahora se lo putearon al Carrano, you know what I mean? He's the one that paid the fucking, for the push, you know what I mean? He fucking dropped him three I, times. I think that whether he had pushed him or not, I mean, he was still going to lose the fight. So it's not it's not that all, because of this did happen, you know? Uh, so so you, it was bad sportsmanship. It, it was, it was. Does it create, so, like if somebody, like, you're, I know your pops is with you, because so I've seen you with your pops. If your pops is at the, at the presser, and the opponent's family or team offends your dad or does something offensive, is that going to boil you up a little bit more for the fight? I think at one point before, um, you know, I, it, we get run by our emotions, right? And that's the wrong thing. As a boxer, that's the one number one thing you should never do. Don't let your emotions take over you because then you start losing fight. You start losing concentration. You start losing focus. So it does get you, but you have to be above that. And, and focus, you know what, I'm going to beat you, but I'm not going to beat you like like a bully or like right. a school's, uh, uh, after school fights. I'm going to beat you in a bigger way, in a mental way, in a broader way. Yeah. I'm going to defeat you. You know what, as a matter of fact, I'm going to break, break you down. I'm going to break you down. I'm going to make you quit. Yeah. That's it. That's it. You don't have to push. You don't have to insult. You don't have to do nothing. You just got to show. Right. And huh? I guess he did. He did. Yeah, he did. He looked good. He looked good. Hey, Frankie, is that because he doesn't have, he doesn't, okay, name me. Any bantam ways are in the pound for pound, bro. That's what I'm saying. I don't think the smaller divisions get the recognition, man. So I'm good with it, bro. But I'm saying he is a killer. So let's not play it like he's not a killer. Uh, don't forget, guys. Keep on sharing. We're going to get to the interview in a little bit. I just got to wrap up some of the fights and then we get into it. Um, from Brooklyn, from the Barkley Center, bro, the fight that we were talking about, I'm going to fly through the, the first one, which was a Gary Russell versus Kiko Martinez because Kiko Martinez was the leftovers for Leo Santa Cruz. Gary Russell was going to beat him no matter what. It was a, what was it, a five-round TKO? You know what I mean? So, that's, I mean, that was a, I knew going into that fight that it was going to be Gary Russell coming out. First it's kind of. Don't ever call nah, a fighter nah. a leftover. No, no, it's not a leftover. Nah. No, I'm going to say that, though. What? Okay. If you're such, no, because Gary Russell was supposed to be the big boy at the 126, right? right. Everybody's avoiding yes. him. Why are you fighting guys? Instead of getting the other champs, right? There's a, the, he just wants to fight Leo, but there's other 126 fighters, but he doesn't want to fight the other ones. He just wants to fight Leo. Yeah, because, I mean, I'm, because I mean, there's another aspect. I'm telling you about hierarchies of boxing. They're a little twisted, you know? Maybe back in the day, where right now, I think it should change. You've seen that uh, post about um, Spence and Walters, that they're both tied up. Yeah, I put it up, bro. Nah, this is my boy. I put it up, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that. That's exactly what's happening. You got these guys... There are leaders, there are kings, yet somehow they have fucking chains. Right. Something's not right there, man. And we're going to get to that when uh, we talk about that? No, oh, you don't want to get into it? No, I want you to continue. Oh, oh no, but you, in the interview, you want to talk about that? About the chains? Dude, I want to talk about anything you want to talk uh, about. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I have no, look. You I'm have no problems up in here. I have a free agent, I have no promoter, no manager, no nothing. You know? But you I, have the boxing rundown. There you go, the boxing rundown right here. There you go. All so right. I, what I'm trying to say, I have nothing. So I have nothing. Nothing to hide. Nothing to hide. Nothing. Nothing. I'm nothing. not protecting no one. Nothing yet. All right. But you did see the fight of the night, which was Deontay Wilder versus Dominic Brazil. The fight que según eso había bad blood. They hated each other. Se querían matar. Yo, yo lo único que sé es que I've never seen such a bigger punch. I think that shit. That was that was incredible. That was like it was a short one though, bro. I don't know. Well, maybe he, he walked into the fucking punch. He, he did. He just walked right. I mean, it was like a crash. It was nasty, dude. Uh, I don't even know if like a lot of people are putting a lot of memes. I mean, don't, I don't hate you, putting don't memes. You think that could be like knockout of the year or something like that? Right now it is. I have it as knockout like, of the year. Yeah, I, mean, I do. I do. Yeah, crazy. Cool he, he, he. Uh, I don't know, man. But, but I mean, that sets up the Anthony Joshua and uh, Wilder at one point. No, I know, no, no. Well, hey, I, okay. So Frankie's saying Canelo versus Khan was a bigger knockout. Then this one, Khan. Yeah, dude, oh. but but we're talking about this year, right? You're talking about this year. You're not talking about lifetime, bro. We're talking about no, this, this year, year so yeah. far. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, Khan. Like, yeah, no, Khan. Yeah, Khan got fell. He fell asleep, bro. Don't yeah, worry. Yeah, yeah. All right. I mean, if we go, if we go about the best knockout in history, I'm gonna go with Marcus Pacquiao. Oh! oh. I say we're done, bro. Yeah, rap. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here we go. 
I want to give a shout out, a shout out to Tom, uh, Tom Loeffler and 360 Promotions. They had a great show last night. If you guys didn't make it, man, you guys should have made it. It was all knockouts, man. I think Tom, we're going to call the Tom Loeffler shows, the 360 shows, the KO shows. All right, man. And with that said, I'm going to get to something that's called What's Cooking on Social Media? Uh, Deontay Wilder versus Luis Ortiz. They won that rematch, bro. Did you hear about that? You think they should do the rematch? King Kong Ortiz versus Deontay Wilder. Do we want to see that? Dude, all I want to see from Deontay Wilder's fight and Anthony Joshua. And That's I think, it. And I think that's everybody's uh, wish, expectation, you know? Yeah. I heard that Klitschko wants to come back. It wouldn't be bad to put Klitschko against uh, Wilder. Wilder? Shh. Yeah, but that would be that would be a multi-billion dollar thing. Imagine you know? So what do you, how much you think, like, that's a big purse, yeah, you're right. You're right. That's you're incredible. Right. But, you know, whatever. Okay. Ifs, what's, ifs, coulds, that doesn't exist. So let's talk about the guy that I posted of being chained up, oh, yeah. who is Errol Spence. I guess Canelo said he wanted to fight him. I don't know why. But, but Canelo wants to fight him. But he's, he's more managed by said, don't, you know, you're I, on no. a roll, you're going, I don't know. Here we go. Oh, yeah, why Errol Spence says, tell Team Canelo, which is Golden Boy, The Zone, everybody, to send Al Heyman the contract, he's willing to sign. Do you guys think that fight gets done? Errol Spence versus Canelo. Uh, I don't. I don't think so. I mean, because Errol Spence is a good business. Why would they try to put him up against Canelo? Canelo it doesn't make sense. I mean, Errol Spence can take over the whole world division if sure. you know, and that's more money than the twenty million dollars they want to give him for fight Canelo. Right. Oh, now let me ask you this. If I'm Errol Spence, do I look at Canelo because it's the money, or do I look at Crawford, like you said, to business. be to be business? Yeah, you do business. You know, you don't you don't try to hit the jackpot when you're already like that close to hitting it yourself. You know, maybe if if nobody knew Spence was and out of the blue, Canelo wants to fight this guy for twenty mil. This guy, his life's gonna get twenty mil. Let's go. But I know for a fact Spence could get twenty million dollars if he continues his work. His work at one point he's gonna get earn more than that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. The last one. Uh, Fury says that Joshua will end up being in the same situation as Dominic Brazil, laid out by Wilder. What do you think? You think Anthony Joshua would be like so easy that he'll get knocked the fuck out? I don't know. After that point, I mean, I've seen Wilder fight. I'm not a big boxing fan in terms of watching fights. I am a, bo- a fan of the boxing art. But, um,. From Wilder, I mean, I was very impressed with this shit he did. Maybe the opponent wasn't as, as elite as the other ones or as big. But uh, I don't know. And I love how Anthony Joshua trains. He's, he's a beast in the training. I've never seen anybody He's training. He's committed. He's, he's committed, committed to his craft. It's incredible. He's committed to his craft. So maybe that's why. I mean, pff, shit, that's, I, think, I think it'll be a great fight. And I don't think it'll be easy at all. All right, guys. So let's, let's do this. We're about to get into the interview, man. I'm done doing the whole... Because with Alfonso, you got to get into because he wants to get into the interview. No, I don't want to get into nothing. Nah, I can't yeah. cut it out, bro. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this. We're going to get this show started, all right? Let's get it started. I'm going to do this. <laughs> the rhyme making, punch throwing, match making, straight from Guadalajara, like now coming to us from where you, California, correct? Long Beach. Long Beach? You're in the LBC, bro? LBC now. All right. Coming to us now from the LBZ, the one and only Alfonso Gomez. Hey. Thank All right, you, man. Hey, you. thank you, brother. Hey, over there in the third seat. Sit down. All right. What's up, guys? Hey, so here we go, man. Let's get it started. Some people right here are talking about why are you coming back to boxing, bro? Right. I'm coming back to boxing because I had like a big awakening. You know, at one point during the full, my four-year retirement, that I felt that I needed to speak. You know, I feel like when you have something within you, like a secret or something that's going to make you better, you have to share it. You don't keep it to yourself. And it all, you know, I just have a lot of things to say that I believe is going to help boxers and people in general be happier. You know, ultimately, I think we everything we do in life. You doing this show, people want to go see fights. Anything we do, any, everything we think, I think the ultimate, the root of it is we want to be happy. That's the root of everything we do. We strive so much for that. Yet nobody teaches us how to be happy. Exactly. 
And that's what I'm here for. I'm not here to teach you how to box. Of course I am. You see my videos, right? Yeah. About how to do this and that. But mainly the, the my projection is to show a different mental side to boxers, especially the ones coming up that are always like, like, fuck, I feel like they're waiting. They're waiting for something when they don't have to wait for anything. So I'm here for speak, speak for stuff. Well, and you're speaking freely. You know what I mean? Like you said, you're a free I agent. Am, free you're a free agent. agent. Yeah. You know what I mean? You had a, a good career. I'm gonna be honest. You've had a good career. I've seen your resume, you know bro. What? Before retiring, I didn't think so. You didn't think so? No. Now no. that you're retired, you now saw. Now that I'm retired, I'm like, wait a you second. You saw your report? Wait a second. No, here's the thing. I've never been. I've been. I've never been a signed fighter. I've always been a free agent. How the hell did I get all this? That that makes me like that blows my mind as to how did I get in the contender? How did I fight Miguel Cotto? How did I fight oh. Canelo Alvarez? How did I fight Arturo Gatti, Jose Luis Castillo, uh, undercard of Pacquiao? Like, it's incredible the career that I had. And the number one incredible thing about it is that I've never been signed. Never been signed? Never. You've never had a promoter or a manager? Not even a manager. Oh, a manager, yeah. I've had somebody that helped me. My manager, yeah, Gary Gittleson. Love you, Gary. You're the best. He has helped me a lot, but more than a manager, he was more of a, an advisor, somebody that always advised me because I wanted to take some fights. Ah, I want to fight. Shh. He would advise me. And somehow I got to the great fights, in the, to the elite fighters, and it's incredible. But how do you do it without a, without a um, promoter? Exactly, I did it, and I'm here to show boxers that there is a way. Alfredo Felix, what up, man? He's from El Centro, California, watching in his 75. What up, man? Th send us a picture of the 75, bro. I'm going to send you a T-shirt just for that. Uh, I also have Fernando Pimentel. He says, I need you to teach me how to throw a punch with uh, core power. What does that mean? Core power? I'll I don't know what the what fuck is the way. Let me show you what happens. Ay, güey, no te vayas a separar. No, 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 aquí, güey, ahí, ahí. Ese me hizo el tadito. I have to show you, I have to show, all right. I have to show. Well, just tell me what it is. The, it's because, ah, fuck, dude. It's a rotation. It's a continuous rotation in boxing. Right? There's, th let me ask you this question. How many moves are in boxing? Two. Ask right. them two. Hey, guys, how many moves are in boxing? Answer oh, right now. How many moves? moves. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer it in two minutes. I want to see how many people are actually write. How many moves do you think... Derived from boxing. We got Roger says nine. No, I say two, bro. He one, says two. two. One, two. You know what I mean? Uh, and what number? Lateral. Is anybody answering that? Yeah, the, 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 the oh, yeah. It's a fee, it's a 10 second delay. That's okay. So, but yeah. So, I'm going to tell you. There's only one move in boxing. It's a root of all moves in boxing. And everything derives from that. If you don't get that one move down... You're always going to have problems with your power. You're always going to have problems with your balance. You're always going to have problems with a lot of stuff. Now, I didn't know this when I was training. I came up with this after. Oh, training. dude. Kevin Taylor says 24. Frankie Olaga says 20, bro. No, That's unless, only one, bro. Unless you said one. There's a lot of punches. There's a lot of movements. But there's only one root move that people don't understand that it is. And it's a rotation. It's a rotation of a unit of your body. Bro, yeah. And people, because people say, I'm going to get up. Yeah, get up. Cause get people, up, Because people say, get up, bro. Oh, do the, do the, uh, twist your, your, pivot your foot, right? So you got, you got Get a little fighters. bit closer. Get a little closer. So you got fighters, pivot in the foot, right? Yeah. And then you got, no, your, sh your shoulders. Look. You got fighters doing the shoulder. And it's not that. It's a whole unit. Every time this motherfucker moves. Let's see. We got moves, you. We got you. The hip moves, the toe moves, everything moves. So it's like a unit where everything moves. Everything, so the movement, the one move, okay, the one move in boxing is this one. This is the only move that exists in boxing. Everything derives from that. Your punches, you see the rotation, your moves, and even when you're moving around the ring, you're right? the most the ring. You're creating this motion, this, right. this rotation. And where does this rotation come from? It comes from here. Just like this, boom, boom, you punch, and you punch, and you punch, and you move, and you move. But once you get that core idea down, every time you punch, you're gonna be like, no, I don't know. The rotation, you know. Oh, anyway, okay, okay. So that's that one move that you have to work really hard. That's how, uh, the the way you create power from your core. Like, like, like I was saying, I didn't know this. You didn't know that until I started training people. After I retired, I started to train people. And I didn't train boxers at all. I trained regular people. Like amateurs or, or no, regular. regular. People just try to get conditioning. Try to get conditioning. And for me to teach them an art, I had to break it down. 
to the core of the science. And I came to realize that a lot of the things that they taught me, I learned them on my own. You know, and I, Dad, I love you. You did great. You pushed me. You taught me a whole, whole bunch. And all the trainers out there, I'm not talking shit on them. I'm even talking about my own father. So you know for a fact I'm not talking shit. But I am being real when I tell you that how the things that teach us, nobody teaches us. We learn them up there the hard way. The hard way. Yeah, we still got trainers telling us what to do when I believe we know more than some trainers. You know? And that's where we go back to the hierarchies of things. El Indio Felipe Castillo says... Gomez, I remember you fighting in the container. I always wanted you to I wanted to see you fight Sergio Mora. And Diana Garcia, what's up, girl? Uh Sergio, I love Sergio, the Latin snake. I sparred with him a few times, but no, I never got the chance to fight him. Oh, well, he's a little bigger than you know. You're, well, yeah, he's well, a one sixty fighter. 160. I'm always a welterweight. Yeah. And I just moved up to the to the one sixties for this show. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's it. it. But it's it. I've all, before, after that, I fought welterweight and super welterweight only. All right, I have another question for you. Enough of the core move and the core power, because you already told me, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna the I, get, I get too excited. You man. get excited, bro. Shit, I have so much to say. It's crazy. We're going to need a part two later. Shit. Let me ask you this. <laughs> Who was your toughest match from your... Past career, right now, you know, moving forward, we're gonna have different ones, right? It's but toughest your match. toughest match up to now, Cotto, Miguel Cotto. Yeah, I mean, when I look back at Caras, number two was Caras. That dude, it's incredible how 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 that guy. I don't know how why I think of Caras in a in a higher way, but to me, it was very difficult. He hit very hard, but Cotto, that guy. It's very precise because people ask me who hits. This is one question. I'm sure all of you have it. Who hits harder, <laughs> Cotto or Canelo? Right. Yeah. That's a question I get asked all the time. Well, no, they're not asking me that question, but they're asking me this question, and well, that's from El let me Indio. Tell you, El Indio, you, no, no, El, let me no, tell no. You why? El Indio is telling me this, bro, right now. How do you feel since you fought Canelo that he's in the pound for pound? But we'll save it. Answer my question first, and then we'll save that one. Okay. We'll I want to make sure that we. Yeah, have that yeah. One. Okay. So. Canelo hits fucking hard, but he hits here, he hits here, he hits, he hits everywhere. Right? He just wants to bruise you, bro. He just wants to fuck you up. Bruise you up. Cotto, every time he punched, he, he rocked me. Like, he was very precise with his shit. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Boom, precise, accurate. He had incre incredible accuracy, and I just couldn't find a way out of that, you know? So, yeah, Cotto was an incredible fighter. At least, being, I believe I got him at the high, one of the highest peak. Oh, no, you, I, you did. You probably did. I mean, it was before that whole Margarito, before that, was just like, oh, that Cotto. Very good. Okay. Yeah. Now, let's talk about this, bro. Uh-huh. So... He says you brought up Cotto Margarito. You think Margarito was dirty with the, the rappings? Yeah, I or, think so. You think so? I, don't, I think so. I think... Uh, I because think, uh, you got to fight Cotto before. Let, let, and you, can you see the difference after he yeah. fought Margarito? Yeah, there's a difference in Cotto. But not only that, when I, 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 when I part Margarito at the uh, LA Boxing on Washington, when it was right there, back in, what was it, 2003, whatever, and I sparred with him... In my life have I been hit so hard. He broke my nose in sparring. And I was like, I was like, it's incredible how hard this motherfucker hits. Incredible. And he broke my nose in sparring. Fuck. Now I know why. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, right. we're gonna get back to the other question, but here we go. Ana Hernandez says, I'm here, Alfonso! Ana! Besos. Ay, cabrón. Oh. Besos, puros besos. Hey, bro, can you put me on the screen? Am I? No, no, I'm in there. I'm in there, bro. I'm just fucking with you. I'm just fucking with you, my boy. All right. Uh, do you? Okay, let's get to that one. How do you feel now that you fought Canelo? Like you said, he's a bruiser, bro. He he bruises you. He wants to hurt you. He nice, hits you. He's the best fighter in the world. Well, he's. Well, I don't think he's. Do you, is he? Did he get right? Is he number one? He's has he, in ever, the has he no. ever been number one? Yeah, he, well, he, has, he, has, right? he has. He has. He goes has. up and down. He right? goes up and down. Let me ask Frankie. Frankie's a big wait, uh, wait, Canelo. Has Cotto been ever number one? Yeah. Pound for pound? Cotto, yeah. Cotto. Has Castillo ever been in the top ten? Ah, that's the one I don't know, bro. Has Gary okay. ever been but in the top you, ten? You, you've had Porter. Porter, yeah. You had Porter. Porter. You, Cotto, Arturo Gatti. Gatti. Castillo. Castillo. Soto Caras, Canelo. Soto Caras, Yoshimiro Kamagai. Like, Kamagai, I, I, bro. I, 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 didn't know I, had, okay. I didn't know I had a good fucking resume until I retired. And I was like looking at shit. I was like, damn. Fuck. 
All right. I, should, I shouldn't play with that before. Okay, <laughs> what about Rick the Ruler right here? Rick the Ruler. Alfonso Gomez. You the man, bro. You've been to the, the tender days. You're mass inspiration for... Oh, he's, he's very inspiration. Okay, now, what's your greatest victory, bro? And what's your worst defeat? That's the question, bro. Okay. Rick the Ruler says, what's your greatest victory and what's your worst defeat, bro? My greatest victory... Um, Obviously, I mean, everybody expects me to say Gotti because that was like, boom, the best fight, the victory that I had. Yeah, I mean, I, I defeated Castillo too at the Cowboys, the brand yeah. new Cowboys Stadium, the Manny Pacquiao undercard. Uh, but I have to say that con the first fight with a contender, you know, facing Peter Manfredo, I think more than what it gave me after, it showed people who I was, the real me. You know, I mean, and I'm not a guy who has a lot of balls. That's where people get the mistake. Oh, this guy has a lot of balls. I'm a thinking guy. And when I fought, I can give you the whole rundown since you like that. The whole round down as to why I chose Peter. Because people ask me, why didn't you choose Peter? And the only thing I chose Peter because I'm Mexican and I has balls. That's not that true. I chose Peter because I analyzed everything that happened from the very, very moment that I got there until the very moment that I chose him. And the way I analyzed everything in my mind like a like a like an equation like a mathematical equation the result was a victory so i went for it and guess what it worked so that was your greatest victory for me it was my greatest victory because he showed that i have something within me to call it to visualize it to call it to visualize it based on a lot of different elements that create this future for myself okay now let me ask you this what about your greatest defeat he said to me mm. or your worst defeat my worst defeat. Um, I think the one that's still, f I don't know, shit. I, I, who did I lose to? A Carnelo, a Cotto. Um, Kamagai, no? No, I didn't lose Kamagai. Oh, you beat Kamagai? Yeah, I retired, I I retired beating Kamagai and Paredes. Both signed my goal. Hey, 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 bro. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. I was the same, bro. I was okay. Who else? Who else? Who else? Okay, who else? <laughs> You got a draw with Macfredo from nowhere? My draw with yeah. Macfredo. No, I'm going to say, I guess my, my worst defeat I'm, is the Canelo fight. You know, okay, it, was, it was sort of very sour. And I, I blame myself in a way for it for not actually trying to get a rematch. Blame myself for something in within that, those lines. Okay. It's something still Because my Diana head. Garcia says. Hi, Diana. All right, Diana says, I'll never forget the rap que le, di, le hizo a Canelo the day they fought. Do you remember that? You think that's what pushed Canelo to get you all? No. No? No. You think he was just encabronado? Because he, he looked mean, bro. He did look pissed off. He looked pissed off when you were talking shit to him, bro. But I was not. This, this is what people don't get it. I was not talking shit. I was showing a fucking talent. Like bars. No, I was actually yeah, I don't know. Showing, you did it. You did I it, I did bro. my thing, dude. You if did you, your if, thing. If you look at the rhymes, they're like, dude, they're pretty witty rhymes. I'm not trying to blow smoke up my ass. But it's a fact that those were good lines. And it was on beat, and it was on rap, and it was a flow. Yeah. And no, nobody has ever done that before. No, no, no. See, people took it the wrong way. You don't, you don't look at the other side of it, which was fucking amazing. Oh, entertaining. At, oh, it was entertaining. entertaining. Did you look at it? Oh, he was talking shit like, ah, get the hell out of here, man. So, but, but you don't think you don't think it, you don't think nah. que le picaste la cresta? Nah, eso no, eso no. Because you got baby face Canelo, dude. Like he was a little baby still. Yeah, yeah. He no like, tenía barba, no nah, tenía nada. Nah, he was all rasuradito. He would show up with uh, like. Like Hell Caesar, fucking robe, you know what I mean? Not todo bien. But it's like the next shoulder pads. Right? Yeah, ahorita ya, ya es todo un hombre. No, no, un cabrón. Está cabrón, güey. Sí, sí, sí. Ese, ahorita, ¿quién le aguanta un madrazo, güey? Yo no. <laughs> yeah, Auntie Wilder, I saw a post uh, by, uh, what was it? Was Crawford said it? He no, posted it? Yeah, Crawford said, he said Canela I, should fight. Uh, no, like, come on, bro. Like, cut it out, bro. No, my man. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, I had somebody, I think, oh, uh, Joe, Joger, or oh, I don't know, who the heck is this guy? I think he's a fake account. But uh, fight Virgil Ortiz. But Virgil is a 140. What are you fighting at right now, bro? If you were to fight, let's say right now, and I'm going to say, I'm going to say the name. Uh, Omar Chavez says, fuck it, let's do the fight, bro. Right here in Cancun. What way? I'll probably fight at 160. He fights at 160, right? Yeah. yeah That's what I'm saying. So why would you guys want Virgil against Alfonso? Because they, they want to they wanna be... Because like every... I'm, I'm going to be real right here. Because like every trainer and every promotion that has a signed fighter, they always look for the biggest name. The name. That they can beat. And it happened all my life. That's why I was never signed. I was always the option. 
Mm-hmm. But guess what? I always, uh, not always, I came out on top the majority of the times. On top. And I got used to that. That's why for me, fighting Kamagai and fighting Paredes and fighting Koto and fighting all these guys wasn't a big issue because from the very beginning, I was never signed. I was, I, dude, I was like all the majority of boxers right now, training your asses off, con carita de peritos así, waiting for somebody to sign us. I was like that too. And then, ¿quieres pelear con este? Is Shay Smith undefeated? Sí. ¿Quieres pelear con este? Uh, Mezcua undefeated? Sí. ¿Quieres pelear con este? Sí. Always hoping that this fight will gonna lead me to that bonus sign- signing. You know, like, so that thing. So they always had like, like the, the, the apple. Like yeah, the golden the apple. Carrot, like the like a little carrot. carrot like, you know, hey, le ganas a este, yeah. we're gonna sign you. But it's not like, it's not even signing. This is how it works. You know? This is boxing business 101, everybody. You know, nobody talks about this. Oh, wow, that's why you're coming to the run now. Do it, bro. You, you are a promotional company. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say in a promotional company. Let's call we, it we'll Ruckus Promotion. Ruckus Promotion. Ruckus Promotion. It, it, it could happen. It could yeah. happen, bro. It's yeah, a high course. possibility. Ruckus Promotions. And right. you have a fighter, right? Right. You I have Dirty Tony. Dirty Tony. <laughs> All right. Dirty Tony. <laughs> He's, you spend money on him, yeah. you sign them. This, you know, because I always fight the sign fighters, right? You spend money on this guy, so you're looking for a name that's gonna build your fighter. Hey, there's Gomez. There's this Gomez. Guy that's, he hasn't hit hard because you know it shows in the record I don't have that knockout power, so he's not gonna hurt my fighter. Uh, he looks pretty easy, you know. He's, he's got a couple of defeats, he, right? You know, he, he's a big name. Like, yeah. We can use it, right? But this is what you you gonna this is what you gonna do because you're a smart businessman. You're gonna be like, hey, Gomez, you wanna fight? Um, Dirty, what did you say? Dirty Tony. Dirty, Dirty Tony. Tony. Yeah. Wapo Tony. Tony. Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's go to Wapo Tony then. You Wapo wanna, Tony. You want to fight Dirty Wapo Tony? <laughs> oh! <laughs> Got him. He'd be like, yeah, yeah. In my mind, like, dude. That's a payday. If, not only that, if I beat him, you just sign him. Yeah. You might actually sign me, finally. So, okay, so that's, okay. So you're saying, hey, I'm a big promotion company, Ruckus Promotion. We have Guapo Tony. Yeah, fuck, uh, I've, yeah, I've yeah. invested. I, I have a, a ESPN contract. Contract. I have invested in him. Say whatever, sixty thousand, right? Whatever, whatever the, fuck. the fuck. I already got him to a good level. Say sixty and zero, right? TV show. TV show. I want him to get a name under him. Right. So now I see Alfonso Gomez is available. Right. What are you calling? And you know I'm searching for fights. You're right? sure? No, because you're I need to feed my family. That's why. I'm no, but besides that, fights. you're trying to get a contract. No. I, at one point, every fighter fights to fucking feed their family, you know? That's why we fight. We're trying to get money. Now, when you come up to me, you have a big promotion and a big fighter. You just sign him. And my mind's like, dude, I'll take it. Because if I beat him, you, you, you sign him and I beat him, logic tells me that you, you might, might, look, I might learn. You might, you might be like, hey, you want to come over here? You know, you did good. So this is what you do. Hey, Gomez, want to fight him? I mean, yeah. Right? Here, sign. option. No, option. What is an option? An option means that if you beat my fighter, you cannot fight for anybody the whole year. I'm like, okay. And my mind's like, cool. Because so that means that I'm, I'm, so in, my, in my mind, as a fighter, I'm saying, shit, I might come back on another show, right? Yeah. So I beat him. As, as you see, my record. And this is what you do. I don't like, I don't know, for some reason, this is what you do. You don't sign me. You actually put my contract like that. I put you on the show. And maybe in a few months, you'll be like, hey, I have this. Guy, tough as nails, like makes no sense in business, right? Uh-huh. They offer me bullshit money. You offer me bullshit money <laughs> against a tough fight, and in my mind, like, dude, I just beat Dirty Wapo, Tony, Tony. It and got I, paid good. It got paid good. I feel like I deserve more now than you offering me a tougher fight for lesser money. Yeah. So I decline it. Like, no. But you I know? keep you on the ice. But you be like. I fucking see right here. It says that you fight for me, and I offer you a fight. If you don't accept it, boom, so the whole year goes by. Now, yes, the whole year goes by. The contract goes over. Here's Gomez again, calling in, trying to go for a fight. Now you have, you have a uh, 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 smart, uh, smart Roger. Smart, yeah, genius Roger. Genius no, Roger. No, let's be honest, genius Roger. We have genius Roger, right? And we go like, hey, you wanna fight genius Roger? And my mind's like, yes. Maybe this time, you know, you have this fighter. Guess what you do? Option, baby. But this time imagine, you're cautious. Imagine, imagine living that one year, one year, one year, one year. I see you. Hey, fuck this shit up. And then hey, bro, I retire. Say bye bye. Hey, bro. So, can you say I don't want to do the option and they take away the fight? 
If you don't sign the option, you don't fight uh, Dirty or Genius. Dirty or Genius? Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. I got you. It's, and it's the way it is. And it's cool. But things have to change. And I came to be that voice. Uh, honestly, I have no filters. I have nothing to hide. I just want boxers to not feel what I felt because they are in a system that is only like your poster was fucking chained. Yeah? Well, nah, nah. Things have to change, dog. The, the, and they have to, man. I think they are gonna change. I'm, I'm not gonna change them, but I know for a fact I will maybe spark the brain that will make some moves. Well, you know, there's a lot of fighters that are starting to do that. Like, look at Mikey Garcia. He's got no promoter, right? Yeah. He's just he works with with, with uh, it's Premier. It's, start, it's it's an evolution. It's an evolution. It's inevitable. But he doesn't have any more ties to a manager. Like you said, yeah. you know what I mean? He controls his own future, pretty nah, much. Well, right? Now, let me tell you, how, boxers, how you will control eventually your future 100% through social media. Now, we got Genius, you know, who did great with Ryan Garcia. I remember when Ryan Garcia had, had like, what, 200,000 followers or 100 or 80. Suddenly, he comes here with Mr. Genius Reese. 10,000 followers, Ryan Garcia. Comes with Roger Reese. Now, he has 2, 3 million followers and it's all based on him it wasn't ryan garcia that did it you know well ryan is beautiful